if you can't figure out how to help yourself truly feel the success on the inside, then you're almost wasting the celebration on the outside. Hey y'all, welcome Meryl's Mystic. I'm Meryl and I empower witches, bitches, and dudes to complete themselves because you are the one that you've been looking for. And today we're here to talk about Pisces season 2022. Pisces season this year will begin when the sun crosses into Pisces on the evening of the 18th, which is in the Northern Hemisphere. It is about 9.42 in the evening. And that's mountain time. I speak in mountain time. Uh, it's 8.42 Pacific time. And then it will remain in the sign of Pisces until it crosses into Aries on the morning of March 20th. And that will also mark the spring equinox. And so Pisces in the Northern Hemisphere is the last uh, month of winter. And that makes it our mutable water sign. And Pisces does tend to be uh, the least outwardly stubborn of the water signs. I don't want to say that they're the least stubborn. I mean, they are a little less stubborn than Cancer and Scorpio, but they also just kind of appear to be a little bit more go with the flow. They appear to be just more of a positive influence. They are similar to Libra and seeing both sides to every story and to looking through the world in rose colored glasses and they are represented by the twin fish. And so many Pisces, I know that they're Pisces when they say that they just can't sit still because those fish just have to keep on swimming. And that is really kind of the energy that this Pisces season this year is bringing to us. Uh, the seasons before this, Capricorn, Aquarius leading up to this, and our Leo full moon just two days before Pisces season begins is all been infusing us with this proud, fierce, strong, unapologetic embodiment of ourselves. And so within Pisces seasons, we ha kind of just have to keep doing what we're doing and keep on keeping on and be where we are and be who we are and just keep swimming. Pisces season is the last month of the zodiac calendar, the last sign in the calendar. And so it's kind of the end of our astrology year. It is the last ending of the old year before uh, Aries marks our spring equinox and the new year for the astrology calendar. And that's, I've kind of become accustomed to viewing the first day of spring kind of as my new year. I really take these first three months of the year um, and ease into uh, the intentions that I want to set for the rest of the year. Um, and because of that, I'm going to try to be taking a break during Pisces season um, so that I'm geared up for the new astrological year. There will still be videos out for the new moon and the full moon. I won't be doing any lives. Um, most of my posts will be scheduled for that month. And I have to do a lot of catch up on the back end and do my taxes. And because of that, um, I'm still going to be available, though, for personal, private, one on one sessions. And so I would love to connect with you one on one during that time. And so until March 20th, the first day of spring, I'm offering 22% off all of my private sessions. And that is with coupon code WINTER, all caps, 22. And all that information is attached in the description. Thank you so much for being here. Also, make sure to like and subscribe if this video resonates with you. Please let me know below also what is resonating with you. Um, and we will get into the reading for Pisces season so in the tarot, Pisces is represented by the moon. I already took out my um, Smith Waite uh, moon card. I don't know if my camera is having trouble focusing on it. There it goes. Yeah, focus on that. There it goes. Uh, so this is the traditional, the more traditional moon card that we see. 
So Pisces being our uh, oldest or most evolved water sign is associated with the moon because of their ability to wade into the deep waters, their ability to embody the twin fish, the twin fish that uh, is synonymous with our light and our shadow, the yin and the yang, the two wolves. And as you see in the moon card, it actually has what appears to be two wolf-like creatures. But if you look closely, one is a wolf and one is a domesticated dog. And so that speaks to the two sides of us as humans. And the moon energy is really about like what is lurking in your subconscious? What is, how deep do you want to go to find out what's really blocking you or to find out who you really are? Uh, the moon card comes up a lot when there's possibly secrets that need to be revealed, but a lot of times it's those things about ourselves that we try to shy away from and that we don't want to look at. And so the last full moon of the astrology cycle, or excuse me, the last new moon of the astrological cycle will be on uh, March 2nd, and that will be the Pisces new moon. And so this is a great, great time to really sit with yourself, do some meditating, do just or just being quiet with yourself, being quiet with your goals, and figuring out what's really going to fit into your, your world then in the next three quarters of the year, the rest of the year, and what's not, um, and, and what kind of, um, what kind of things do you need to manifest in order to make that thing, those things happen or not. And then the full moon for Pisces season will be in Virgo, and that takes place, um, early morning of March 18th. So the evening of the 17th, um, into the morning of the 18th just a couple days before airy season begins. Um, another nice thing about Pisces season is that the we are officially out of the retrograde shadow as of the 25th of February. Um, so we will not have another retrograde until we are into Taurus season near the end of April. Um, so ha this will be a nice this movement into spring is going to, I think, going to move pretty smoothly if you allow it to. Um, there needs to be a balance of moving forward actively and also allowing passively the things that need to happen to happen. Um, this is about finding the balance between being in your present and also uh, dreaming of the future. Pisces can be a very dreamy energy also. Um, so it's a good time also to like reconnect to any of the intentions or uh, New Year's resolutions that you set at the beginning of 2022. This is actually like prime time to reconnect with those things and say, okay, were some of these realistic or ha or do I or do I still want to make them happen? Do I need to let something fall by the wayside? Ha have new things emerged in the last couple months that I would like to work on instead? Um, and these are just great foundational steps to take in order for your your year to be successful in order for you to, especially if your goal is to be in a different place this time next year than you are right now. And I know there's a lot of people that are, are really working on their goals and really working on creating the life that they have dreamt, always dreamt of living. So if, if this is really speaking to you, like definitely take some time um, and be with yourself and uh, be with those who are going to contribute to your happiness and contribute to your future and it's a great time to these things that we've been learning about ourselves since scorpio sagittarius season the these are that time to really like integrate the things that you've been working on and and, and making your 
manifestations through the universe more specific. It's really important right now that thing that you get as specific as possible about what you, what you want in life and how you want to feel and how you want things to look. Um, and then it's also important for you to recognize how far you've come and find gratitude in the things that you already have and find gratitude in, in the relationships that you have and the people that you have around you. So if you, it's a lot, it, um, there's always a big swirl of emotion and energy during Pisces season. So, um, that's why I figured it was a great time to be offering a discount and I would love to help guide you. Um, through anything that might be coming up for you during Pisces season. So we're going to use actually the um, Modern Witch Tarot by Lisa Sterl. Let's see if camera picks that up. There it goes. Um, that's why I got my moon card out from my traditional deck. And then um, we'll do the actual moon card reading. Um, if you've seen some of my other general energy uh for the last couple seasons general energy readings for the last couple seasons i've been doing i was called to change how i'm doing these readings um and i've been really liking how they're turning out and so i didn't want to get my moon card out of the deck i wanted it to be completely organic okay so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip our deck over and we're gonna look for our moon card and this deck's new, so it's a little slower going then. And the, this is actually a great way. It's funny, I'm actually running by all, I just saw like <laughs> all the major arcana cards for like the last few seasons that I was just talking about us con connecting with all the things we've been learning about ourselves, all the things that you've been learning about yourself. I, I'm on the journey with you. That's why I say us. Um, I swear I just, I'm passing all those cards that represent all those signs. And so I feel like that's a nice little serendipitous sign to say, hey, like that's, we're on the right track here. Oh, uh, where is our moon card? It's always, it's always near the bottom. So this is, oh, there it is. Okay. So this is a great thing that you can do for yourself. Also a great reading, quick reading, if you're wanting to connect with the major arcana cards or the lessons of those cards or the lessons of the season for you specifically looking for you know shuffling putting your intention into it and then just going through and looking for that card that's what we're doing so there's the moon card in in your deck and then i'm also grabbing the card right before it and the card after it put my deck back together we don't really need that anymore. So here's our moon card, which is our, here's the modern witch moon card, which it's more of a humanization depiction of the traditional card. But I like how they're, they're in their birthday suits. I like how they're naked in their purest form. So this is about to who you are in your purest form and in your like id those those who what your building blocks have created within you and so we're looking at the lessons around the moon energy and you can as like i said you could do this for yourself for you specifically um and so for the moon specifically the the undercard would be that like deep subconscious underlying thing that's holding you back. And then the the top card, it's interesting because usually I get kind of like the intention right away. The top card almost feels just kind of like what Pisces season is bringing for us specifically this year. And use your intuition. Um, because usually it's like, you know, what could be blocking you? What could be holding you back? You know, what's in front of you? What's behind you? Um, you know, if this is where you are currently, what's the past? What's the future? There's all sorts of ways you can do this. And I, I just truly listen to my intuition and my guides to see where they're, they're guiding it. And so this really feels like the Six of Wands in reverse 
is our, um, there it goes, is, sorry y'all, I'm trying to use my new iPhone as my camera and this mode is cool, but it's having a trouble focus, knowing what to focus on. So the six of wands in reverse, and I'll put it up on the screen. So it's very, it kind of, it actually feels like it's playing off a little bit of bat of the, excuse me, the full moon in Leo reading. So if you haven't seen the full moon in Leo reading, definitely go watch the Leo full moon reading. And because that's really about, we're, we're just, we're so anxious for spring. We're so, you know, once again, we're experiencing so much. Um, we've had to con con continue to stay isolated in, a, in a certain capacities. We're definitely still not out and about the way that we used to be. And there's this feeling of like, oh, I, gotta, I just want to get out there. I just want to get out there. Um, and But the feeling is like around the corner. It literally feels like, like I literally just saw like, like got a vision of like a corner of a, of like a, a store corner of a street where like you're, you know, you had a park a few blocks away, you're trying to meet your friends at this show and you're just walking and you know, once you get to like that street, that main road, usually Broadway, <laughs> and you turn that corner, like it's gonna there, it's gonna be right there. There's your people. Like, I made it. It was worth all of it. And this is in, like, a metaphorical sense. Because the Six of Wands is very much this celebratory card. And there was very much that energy coming up for the Leo full moon. But there is, like, a, a holding back. Like, a, like a wait a second. Like, it, we're so close. So close. It's still winter in the Northern Hemisphere where, you know, spring is just around the corner. You will have plenty of time to go and do those things. You will have plenty of time to do these celebrations outwardly. There's this need for this like outward celebration. And what, what you're really being called to do is find the inner celebration first. Find ways that you can celebrate without so much outside validation. Finding ways um, to celebrate with those closest to you that you haven't had to isolate from. You know, ha communicating more saying things out loud more just saying things out loud like isn't it so great that this happened isn't it so great that this is going on it's like if you feel the need to celebrate right now like it's not saying like don't celebrate it's just it just feels like we're being asked why do you feel such a need to make your celebration so big because it, and it's funny because we've been there's also this this thing that we've been this paradigm we've been working against of making sure you you celebrate your small victories so that you really feel the big ones and like it's not this like well you shouldn't be celebrating so much and being so gregarious it's not it can seem like it's coming off that way, <laughs> but um, they're like, yeah, but it, it, it's not like stop celebrating. It's that it's wanting you to feel the achievement on a deeper level, to feel how far you've come in your soul, in your heart, in your stomach. Because so many times when we're looking for, oh, I need this validation, the celebration of my success around me so that I can feel like I did it. They don't want you to have to look for that anymore. Great. Because we all know a party is great and we all know a celebration is great. And like, we all know, we all have those friends that have birthday months, you know? So it's it's not like, oh, you should stop celebrating 
and I don't know why I they're like um, they're really trying to get me to explain the balance of this here because we're talking about this moon energy. And so that's like on this deep, deep emotional level that if you can't figure out how to help yourself truly feel the success on the inside, then you're almost wasting the celebration on the outside. Okay. So it move so then it makes me want to then talk about this deeper thing and why what might be holding you back or what might be blocking you from allowing yourself to truly feel it. It's like <laughs> It's like they like it's like they want you to feel as good as your Instagram looks, you know. <laughs> feel as good as your highlight reel looks so you're not hate liking other people's highlight reels, you know? Like cuz we see those that a lot. You know, no one's posting when they're fighting with their significant other on Facebook. Sometimes they are. And usually everyone's like, mm, awkward. Um, but this is about these emotions that are so easily sometimes expressed on the outside, making sure they're lining up on the inside so that they, they really make an impact. So that they really make an impact and that you're not just like, okay, that was fun. Now it's on to the next thing. Like they want you to really sit with these things also give it its you know give give it its day get give it more than its day sometimes we're celebrating endings to things or transitions or accomplishments in such a small fraction of how long it actually took to get to that point and i'm talking like beyond birthdays you know like deadlines projects businesses events that you're trying to put on all all these sort of things like the amount that we celebrate is a minuscule compared to how much time we put into it to get there so maybe it's time for us to try to draw out those celebrations a little bit more Everyone knows how to draw out their birthday celebrations like we need to know how to draw out all the success celebrations in between And these are not those things that we have easy celebrations for. I'm not talking about birthdays. I'm not talking about weddings. I'm not even really talking about babies, even though like mothers in this country need more support. That's a given. These are about your own personal accomplishments so that you fully feel them. So that you are, are so that is filling, so they're actually filling your cup as you're doing them. And as you're feeling the accomplishment. And that you feel it so much that you don't have to rush on to the next thing. Because with the fool coming up in reverse here, what's really holding this back is not being present. Is not being present. Not seeing the forest for the trees or the trees for the forest or however that goes. It's like, it's, here's our fool here's our modern witch fool isn't she cute and the fool has actually been coming up a lot lately i like i the fool's one of my favorite energies we need to come up with like a we need to they need to be called the hero or something or like the protagonist because the fool really is like main character energy and there's been a real call for that for a lot of us is is living this main character energy in your life and how to say to center yourself and please go watch my few videos for Aquarius season and the Leo full moon because this is a theme that's carrying through. And a part of this is the need to be present, the need to be in like literally in our lives. And it's a practice because sometimes we get so in our lives that you forget to text certain family members on holidays. <laughs> 
and you text them the next day you're like I'm so sorry like and then most people understand there's a lot going on right now um I speak from experience so this need to be present and finding gratitude in also what you've already accomplished because I've seen this theme too with we get to a certain point in our life and we start questioning what we can do and what our like capabilities are and it's all and like I catch myself having to remind myself things that I did that were wildly courageous that I didn't even give myself enough credit for at the time and I'm not even giving myself a credit enough credit for even now for for doing trips I took places I lived decisions I made you know times I put myself out there times I figured out something I wanted to do that not a lot of people wanted to do and I did it and how quickly we forget all those times we've done that for ourselves when something else comes up or we want or we want to accomplish and we're like oh, I don't know though I don't know if I can make that happen what what look at all the other things you've accomplished like I need to make like a visual list of it it's like all the things that you've accomplished that are cuckoo bananas wild all the things that you've done that you might not know a lot of people who've done that thing that is so cool and unique and individual for you okay there's not just one thing that aligns with everybody perfectly so the fool to wrap it up is every is the fool i feel like is the one thing that actually does connect to everybody because the fool is supposed to represent you me you know this is about our journey through through the experiences and lessons of life and when it comes up in reverse that means there's a great resistance there to even being on that path and being on that journey and again it's this balance of being purposeful and present and also being open and trying to relax a little bit into it to just kind of to let because a lot some there's so many times there's a lot of times when we have to take action for ourselves for the world there's a lot of times though when you put stuff out there and the universe just delivers it to you because you trusted that that was going to work out for you okay but also, I think in that trust, you end up finding some motivation to do the things that lead to that outcome. It's like action times trust equals more aligned outcomes, okay? All right. Um, I want to do an energy oracle card from Sandra Ann Taylor. Been having fun with these. Oh, this didn't go together at all. Let's try that again. Uh -huh. Cool. Victory in reverse, which I love that because guess what victory in reverse has also got? The six of wands. Validation and alignment all together. Victory in reverse. The 28th card. Ooh, I almost went right, right to it. 27. Success, achievement, victory reversed. The victory card reverse signals a delay or reversal in a hoped for outcome. Whether it's in personal change or external achievement, success may have been eluding you for some time, but don't despair. You may need to restructure things, reevaluate or re or release one specific outcome and set your sights on another. Whatever's going on externally 
Remember that the equanimity of peaceful surrender can often be the biggest victory of all. That's, that's that trust piece I was talking about. The affirmation, I'm achieving great things within myself and in the world. I see myself as a success in many wonderful ways even now. I am achieving great things within myself and in the world. I see myself as, as a success in many wonderful ways even now. Because the more you see yourself as a success now, the more you attract success. The more you work on what's within here, the more your ripple, the ripple out from you will affect the world around you positively, okay? You got this. I believe in you. It's okay to be a little selfish right now. It's like putting the batteries on reserve if you can. Doing, making sure you're implementing certain things for yourself so that when you're going out and doing things in your community that you're not burning out. And just taking care of yourself and your loved ones and being giving yourself some grace and remembering that if you've made it this far, you can keep going and that you're doing great, right? Don't forget, 22% off all my private sessions. Winter 22, all the, all the links and information are attached. Please be sure to like, subscribe, share with a friend who may need this. Go watch your tarot scopes for your sun, moon, and rising sign. Let me know if you have any questions at all. Join my mailing list to get all the mystical things before the rest of the internet. And I will see you for Aries season. Bye.